Uh, so this class has been going on for eight years now, started in 2014 by Dr. Snyder, and every year the class is changing, creating something new, and, and that's what's really special. And I feel like I, I speak for all of us who are in the class uh, by saying that you know this really changed our, our outlook and our mindset on nuclear weapons, nuclear power, and, and how do you utilize all of that. Um, you know, I think a lot of us, it's, it's something that we don't really learn about, and, and this class puts the focus, you know, on all of that, and, and that's what's super special about it. Um, so we started the class nine weeks ago, learning about nuclear power, how it works, getting into the nitty gritty details, and then we moved on to nuclear weapons, uh, and we've done some really interesting stuff all, uh, along the way. So we participated in the Columbia field trip. Um, so every quarter, students in the module go to Columbia, they uh, actually see the radiation, you know, still on the campus of Columbia since it was the site of the Manhattan Project 80 years ago, and how that radiation is still there. And, you know, just thinking about it, that was just for a couple of years. Think about how long it would be for nuclear bombing and how much of an impact that would have on the, on the land. Uh, we were also lucky enough to um, view uh, the film The Vow from Hiroshima, um, and we were visited by Michi, uh, Susan, and Robert, uh, and we watched their wonderful film, which was all about, yeah, they stand. Uh, and, and the film was super powerful, The Vow from Hiroshima. I urge all of you to watch it as soon as you can. Um, it, it followed Michi's journey as well as Setsuko Thurlow's journey, um, connecting with their past, um, you know, and actually working on, you know, act, being active in the community. Uh, and it really followed their work throughout the last couple of years, which actually led to them all winning a Peace Prize for their efforts in 2017 through past. <laughs> Yes. So that was super amazing to, to be a part of, and, and hearing that again changed a lot of our outlooks. And it, it, was, it was a really good seeing that humanistic approach to nuclear bombs specifically and their impact. Um, so the last thing is, you know, this project is the PSAs. So we were all encouraged to make PSAs about just one stance that we believe in. And throughout the class, you know, Dr. Snyder is not giving his opinion. He is strictly talking about the facts here. And so each of us in this PSA made something that we believe in and that we stand by based on the facts. And it might be something different. You might be hearing different opinions in this PSA, but it's stuff that we all stand by and stuff that we are all proud of. Uh, and so please enjoy the PSA, uh, as well as I feel like I speak for all of the seniors here. Uh, this is our last module at the iSchool. We will not be taking a module next quarter. Uh, and so this has been a really fitting way to end the iSchool experience. Uh, and we'd like to thank Dr. Snyder. <laughs> um, and so please enjoy the films. And yeah. Imagine this, you're walking around minding your business when you receive a phone alert. There's a nuclear missile approaching your area. Your mind would be racing. What does this mean? Will I be safe? What should I do? You'd have absolutely no time to contemplate these questions as the bomb detonates and destroys everything within a 10 mile radius. The center of the blast is the fireball, the hottest spot. It could reach up to 100 million degrees Celsius, enough to completely vaporize human beings off the face of the earth. If you were at the fireball, you'd die instantly, leaving only a shadow behind. Right after the explosion, everything within an 8 mile radius would light a blaze, leaving everything you love burnt to ash. You'd then face a shockwave that destroys whole buildings with ease. Although this amount of force seems incomprehensible, nuclear weapons have actually already been used on civilian targets. In 1945, the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan were bombed by the U.S. Air Force. Survivor accounts depict a horror never seen before. A hellscape of zombie-like people run with their skin charred and their muscles falling off their bones. 70,000 died instantly in Hiroshima, but the real pain and suffering came to the survivors. 30,000 more died from their injuries by the end of that year. 
the only thing that nuclear weapons bring is wide-scale destruction. No good can come from them, and we need to abolish and decommission them so they can't be used even accidentally. You're not helpless in this fight. Even if it seems it is out of our hands, it isn't. You can do your own research on nuclear weapons, write to local government officials, work with anti-nuclear organizations like I can, but most importantly, stay true to your values. If we all work together, we can save our civilization from ourselves and ban the use of nuclear weapons completely. Alicia Sander Zachary. I am the policy and research coordinator of the international campaign to abolish nuclear weapons. My organization, ICANN, uh, won the Nobel Peace Prize for our work to adopt the first international treaty prohibiting nuclear weapons. What I think is most frightening about the current status uh, of nuclear weapons in the world today is that there are more than 13,000 nuclear weapons uh, around the world. Many of them can be launched uh, within a minute's notice. And we know there's this history of uh, very close calls and accidents near nuclear weapons use since 1945. So even though there has not been a nuclear use in several decades, the truth is there is always a risk of nuclear weapons use as long as these weapons exist. I think this is so important that we understand that nuclear weapons threaten everybody. Everybody has a voice. Everyone deserves a place at the table and a voice when it comes to nuclear weapons policy. Uh, it's not something just for people who have PhDs or for scientists. You can find a local organization you can uh, work to get your local elected representatives to join our parliamentary pledge, uh, which is working to get your country to join the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. Uh, you can work to get your city to adopt a resolution joining our city's appeal. Anyone can get involved and we really encourage that. Nuclear weapons. 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 Nuclear weapons can destroy nations. The largest bomb ever created and detonated was the Tsar Bomba, crafted in the Soviet Union in 1961. It created a mushroom cloud equal to the height of 110 World Trade Centers stacked on top of each other. Nuclear weapons have the power to destroy entire nations. It's terrifying to live in a world where with the click of a button, a country could be completely obliterated. While it can be believed that nuclear weapons are used for protection, the consequences involved are immoral. Being in close proximity to ground zero will result in instant vaporization. Being within miles of it can lead to melting of the body and extreme radiation sickness. The effects of radiation can pass down in families for generations and cause birth defects and increase in cancer rates. A fraction of a second after the bomb is dropped, there is a blast wave, traveling at thousands of miles per hour, destroying everything in its path. Dropping a nuclear bomb is an act against government, but it ends up harming and killing innocent lives. You can see the direct effects after the bombings in Nagasaki and Hiroshima in 1945. You can go to pledge.icanw.org, scroll to the bottom, and send a pre-written letter to your representative about nuclear disarmament. If you don't know where to find your representative, you can go to www.house.gov, and under the Representatives tab, you will find your district's rep.
this was all fake, but currently in Russia and Ukraine, there is a nuclear battle going on. This issue is bigger than what many of us think. Nuclear bombs are the most deadly form of weapons in the world. Currently, there are 13,080 nuclear weapons, and the U.S. owns 5,550 of them. The damage of one nuclear bomb can cause up to 60,000 casualties from just the impact itself. Over decades, the effects of nuclear particles that people are exposed to can cause radiation poisoning and long-term health effects like cancer and cardiovascular disease, making the number of casualties go up to 100,000 or more. Fallout from these bombs disperse radioactive particles that fall into the earth, contaminating air, soil, water, and animal living in the area. Our goal is to educate our generation on this current issue and make sure we can have an impact on our future. This is what students at the NYC High School had to say. What are your thoughts about nuclear weapons? It's a tragedy. It's just heartbreaking. Like a big gun. Effect on the atmosphere. Nuclear weapons are well, very dangerous. And the bigger the gun, the more threatening they are. And once one fires, then like it's a chain reaction. Nah, guy, this science guy. Nah, 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 nah. Science rules. Hi, I'm Nah, guy, the science guy. I'm here to tell you why I should move away from nuclear power. Nuclear power is very expensive. The minimum cost for a singular plant is $6 billion. They're also very dangerous. Nuclear meltdowns can occur when the reactor melts the surrounding building, exposing lots of nuclear particles into the environment. These particles can cause radiation pollution, serious burns, and make the land uninhabitable for millions of years. The alternative to nuclear energy is green energy. Green energy will be expensive in the short term because of the transition, but in the long term, green energy will be way cheaper to sustain because you don't have to deal with the nuclear meltdowns or pollution. We already have the technology for this. We have wind turbines, solar panels, and hydroelectric dams. These will produce zero greenhouse gases. That means less pollution and will negate the impact of climate change. The reason this hasn't been implemented yet is because these nuclear power co companies have a hold on the government financially.
everybody. All right, let's start the video now. Calm down. Let's get this nuclear briefing on the road. Trinity, first ever nuclear explosive. Fission bomb, they created a radioactive area. Next. Star bomb, the most powerful nuclear weapon ever created. Powerful enough to destroy London. Seems quite excessive. First showcase of nuclear weaponry, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Over 200,000 casualties. What is going on with the video? And bombs more powerful than Hiroshima and Nagasaki are surrounding the entire world. Blowing up everything we know and love. Killing everyone we know and love. Burning the world to ash. So nothing is left but a big ball of flame and radiation to kill us all. Isn't that beautiful? I don't understand. What was that? That was the future of nuclear weaponry. That was a human speaking. The kind that gets killed from weapons like these. The existence of these weapons should stand against everything that humanity is. With the push of a button, people's lives and future generations are heavily damaged. We have made progress disarming these bombs, but one nuke is still too much. And no amount of neglect will stop these weapons from hovering over our head. So we need to stand together to protect the right to live without danger. So I ask for you to lend your help to stand up against nuclear weapons. So what should you do? I recommend you educate yourself first and see what these nukes do firsthand in the documentary, The Vows from Hiroshima, which shows firsthand what these nukes have done to innocent lives. Whether it's through letters or rallies, anything helps to get these nukes off our planet. Are you ready for the end of the world? Because, like it or not, it might be coming sooner than you think. An atomic bomb breaks loose from a mounting shackle in a B-47 jet over Florence, South Carolina. Plummets to Earth, causing a sensational freak accident. There was near disaster for those within range there always is the possibility of an accident. There have been 32 accidents. The first one in 1950 and the last one in 1980. Six nuclear-tipped cruise missiles were loaded onto a B-52 by mistake, blown across the country, and left unguarded on the tarmac. No one noticed for 36 hours. Accidents have occurred at the top of snowy mountains crashed at the end of runways. There have been mid-air collisions. There have been planes destroyed in terrible weather. Planes just came apart. The bombs went on down. To date, six nuclear weapons have been lost and never recovered. The high explosives inside the nuclear weapons detonate, killing fire and rescue personnel. Nineteen people are killed in the explosion. One of the problems with complex technological systems is you never know where a potentially catastrophic problem can begin. 17 Air Force officers are being relieved of their duties controlling nuclear missiles. An inspection in March tested the group's missile launch proficiency. They were rated as marginal, the equivalent of earning a D grade, barely passing. During an aerial refueling, the, the tanker and the bomber uh, had a collision and it dropped four hydrogen bombs over Spain. Equipment is ancient. This, for example, is one of the computers that would receive a launch order from the president. It uses floppy disks, the really old, big ones. This technology has constantly been on the verge of slipping out of our control. Four Air Force officers who hold the launch keys to nuclear missiles leaving open the blast door that's supposed to prevent terrorists from entering the capsule. Ron, furious, began expanding its uranium stockpile. For the first time, the mysterious and secretive nation has threatened a preemptive nuclear strike against the U.S. When he offered a thinly veiled threat that if any nation dared to try to stop him from invading Ukraine, they would be met with the threat of nuclear war. This is what a House hearing on nuclear security looks like. Because uh, the public has not tuned into these issues as uh, they should.
Warning, the following video contains graphic images. Viewer discretion is advised. So, why should we disarm? Well, for one, nuclear weapons are expensive. Billions of tax dollars are used to fund such an invention that could destroy all of humanity. This money could be used for healthcare, education, food, and many more global issues. It would be morally incorrect to take the life of another for the mere purpose of politics and war. Bomb explosions kill instantly and could cause slow, painful deaths to those who live in the proximity. Many countries have already given up nuclear weapons such as Ukraine, South Africa, Belarus, and Kazakhstan. Currently, nine countries own a combined total of 14,500 nuclear weapons, which is an improvement on the once 70,000. To this arm, engineers must know the sequence in which the bomb was put together. The centrifuges separate the uranium into two streams, one enriched in uranium-235 and the other consisting of a lower concentration of uranium-235. They would then take that U-235 and in the best interest of the UN repurpose uranium so that it could be used for power plants. So what can you do? Go to www.senate.gov, click Senators and press Contact. Choose your state and you will be provided with Senators to contact. Select Share your opinion or comments on bills or other issues. Fill in your contact information and tailor the script for use in the section named Comments. Hello, my name is Jane Doe and I am a resident of Blank State. I feel it is my duty to bring the pressing matter of nuclear weapons to light. They are both destructive and immoral to people and their homes. If we were to disarm them, we would not only remove the risk of accidents and threats to ourselves, but we would also set an example to other countries to do the same. Remember, the first step in change is discussion. Contact your local senator today and make the change you want to see possible. As JFK once said, the weapons of war must be abolished before they abolish us. Disarm now. Save the planet. of August 6th, Japanese time, the first atomic bomb hit an enemy target. It was, it was quite horrifying to see so many people dead and still moving. Tremendous flash. It's like a thousand lightning at the same time. It was so strong. Then came tremendous explosion. So we stood up. We saw the window and the doors and the roofs were disappeared. That's tremendous destruction. We couldn't see anything because the shelter was so dark.